contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me share your love and grace in all I do Oh Lord, transform me Change my heart become issues of life that would help us to be better people in Jesus name. The message is entitled Conquerors Never Quit and my text taken from Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 and the Bible says here brethren I count not myself to have been apprehended Paul is saying, I'm not speaking as one who have made it. But he said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And Philippians 4 and verse 13, a very known text, the Bible says here, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And then I want to tie it in with Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 37, the Bible says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, and neither nor height, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Many years ago, some scientists conducted an experiment with some rats. They constructed a tank and they made the four sides of the tank very smooth so the rats would not be able to climb up. They filled the tank with water. 
and uh, just leave enough room so that the rats can breathe and they put a covering over it. And they observe, and the rats were there for a few hours. And then after hours pass, the rats went down under. The scientists took the rats out, cleaned them, feed them, fill the same tank of water a couple of days after, and put the same rats back into the same tank and cover the tank. By this time, the rats learn the surviving skills. All the rats, heads, were looking up. You see, in looking up, there is only, there is always hope. The scientists observed for one hour, and they were still looking up. For four hours, and the rats were still looking up. For ten hours, and the rats were still looking up. For 20 hours, and they were still looking up. For 30 hours, and they were still looking up. For 50 hours, and they were still looking up. For the Bible says in Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. For whence cometh my help? And verse 2 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The first time the rats went down under. The second time the rats had hope with their heads held up. Philippians 3.13, Paul said, I am rejoicing, yes, but not because I have a degree. Paul is addressing those who believe that they have achieved and think that they, have, they are better than everybody. Smarter, brighter and think that they know more than even God himself. Paul is saying you should not be like that. Paul said, if there is somebody to boast, I should be that one. Paul sat at the feet of Gamaliel, a very noted rabbi at the University of Alexandria. One other thing he said about himself, Paul, in verse 7, Paul said, What I gain, I counted loss for Christ. In verse 13, he said, I have not yet arrived. I am not going to hold everybody else down to the ground while I alone achieve. Paul came from Tarsus. And today, if we should try to locate where Paul came from, it would be the southern part of Turkey. He came from the tribe of Benjamin, and he was a Pharisee. His mentor was the famous rabbi, Gamaliel. Before his conversion, he was the one who authorized the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7, verse 58, the first Christian to be martyred. Then he met we met him on the Damascus Road as Saul changed into Paul, handpicked by Jesus to become uh, the gospel most ardent messenger. Paul traveled tirelessly throughout the ancient world, taking the message of salvation to the Gentiles, the all-time giants of Christianity. He made three long missionary journeys throughout the Roman Empire, planting churches, preaching the gospel, and giving strength and encouragement to every Christian. At one point in time, Paul have said, I have taken the gospel to the entire world. Of the 27 books in the New Testament, Paul is credited as the author of 14 of those books. One of Paul's most famous statements, Yes, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 reminds us that our power to live the Christian life comes from God and not from ourselves. His most hopeful words to those who will be martyred for their faith is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. He said, and I quote, I have fought a good fight. 
I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. On a daily basis, you and I need to keep going through open doors. Keep on reaching for the stars. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the Bible says, God has plans for us. Don't allow people to pull you down and out. They may knock you down, but don't let them knock you out. Paul said in verse 8, I count everything but dung. And the dung is spelled D-U-N-G, meaning animal excrete. Dung, ah, like fertilizer. It has nutrients and, and proteins from which we get energy. And it has phosphorus. Paul said, I count all my achievements as dung. Some dung can kill the plants. Be careful with the things that can kill you. He said, for I have I've been trained. I can conquer the world. And let me say to you this morning, with the help of God and by God's grace, you can conquer the world like the Apostle Paul for Jesus. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot achieve. One with God is greater than the majority. David with God, look at a nine feet, nine inches tall giant. And he said to him, you come to me with a sword and a shield, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord and hit bullseye. Not only David knocked him down, but David knocked him out. Let me say Martin Luther, with God led the Reformation. The just shall live by faith. Let me also mention here, Moses and God was able to deliver the children out of Egyptian slavery when God opened up the Red Sea and made an highway where there is no way. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. By one man's obedience, the whole world can be saved. And by one man's disobedience, so many people can be lost. One little fellow's lunch was able to feed over 5,000 plus with the help of God. Paul said, I press towards the mark. The word press means you will encounter resistance. Nothing good comes easy. When people say to you, you are good for nothing, and you would never accomplish anything in life, what do you do with that resistance? You have to say to them, that's what you're saying, and that's what other people are saying, but let's hear what God is saying. And God is saying that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Sir Winston Churchill, a great statesman, former Prime Minister of Great Britain, was asked to deliver a feature address at a prestigious university in England. And that particular day, this great statesman walked into the room with a felt hat on. And he had his cane on. By then he was very old. He stood before the audience and he said to them, My message is very, very short and very simple. And he said, My message, he took his felt hat off, put his cane down, and he said, My message today is never give up. Then he started making his way to the entrance. And midway between the entrance and the podium, he said, I want to remind you that my message today is never give up. And as he entered the room at the door to depart, he said, remember, my message today is never give up. You see here, Paul switched to the singular mood. He said, I, not we, but I press towards the mark. In verse 14, there is a mark 
You know, some people's mark is to be a doctor. Others might be to be a lawyer or to be a scientist or whatever profession in life. But let me tell you, there is a mark that is higher than all of the professions. The ultimate goal is heaven. And let me say to you listeners, never lose sight of that goal, heaven. The Bible says that you and I need to lay hold in salvation. A famous marathon runner from Nigeria was invited to run in a race. You know, some of these people planning these races, they would invite some of these great runners to attract people to the stadium. And Achero was his name. Achero Roy started the marathon race. In the process, something happened. He got in an accident where he fell and he damaged some of his ribs. It was very painful, but he never gave up. And the news went out to the stadium that Acha is damaged. He's hurt badly, but he's running. And the people in the stadium, you know how they build those stadiums so that you can, you can see the people from a distance coming close to the finish line. And as he approached, the people in the stadium, they gave him a standing ovation and, and they clapped him. And as he passed the finish line, blood trickling down his face, a news reporter rushed to him with a mic and said to him, Archer, you know that you were hurt badly. Why didn't you stop running? Archer said, I didn't leave my country. To come way over here to start a race. He said, I came to finish the race. Let me say to you, remember, conquerors never quit. The wise man Solomon said in the book of Ephesians chapter 9 and verse 11, he says, the race is not for the swift, nor the battle to the strong, Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to the men of understanding, nor yet favor to the men of skill, but he that endures to the end. Paul said in Hebrews 12 and verse 1, Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And let me say to you, the race that is set before us is not a hundred meter dash, it's a race for your life. As we read earlier on, in Romans chapter 8, from verse 37, the Bible says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let me say to you today, I want you to look back and think about God. Maybe some of us, we were sick, but God healed us. You had no money, and God helped you to pay the bills. You had no car, you used to walk to go to school and to go to work. But today you drive in your own car. You had no house. You used to live many years ago in your parents' house. Now you have your own house. And you finished paying for your house. You never went to secondary school, some of you. But today your children are graduates from some of the top universities in the world. Put your hands in the air and shout praises and hallelujah to the Lord. I want you to look forward and trust God. We have the promise of God that we, our strength are renewed every single morning. Every time you and I get up, God has given to us the strength. You are not fighting for victory. The victory was already gained through Jesus. You and I are fighting 
from victory. God's judgment will be in favor of the saints. In Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 7, the Bible says, No weapon formed against the child of God will prosper. In Isaiah 58, 59 and verse 19, the Bible says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirits of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And then in Psalm 47, uh, 34 and verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him and delivered him. I want you to look around and serve God. People are dying and you have life. People are dying from all kinds of sicknesses. People are dying very young. People are jobless and you have a job. People are in poverty and you have plenty to eat. People are, are, are divorced. And then you are living together with your spouse. Children are cursing their parents and are disobedient to their parents. But your children are in church. You have a cause to shout glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then as we close, I want you to take an introspect. I want you to look within and I want you to find God. Religion can be defined as man reaching out to something that is beyond man, and that something is God. Do some introspect. Search your soul. Build a relationship with your maker. Talk to him every day in prayer. Read his word more regular. Get excited about his love and his grace. Get more acquainted with the God, make sure that the vertical man with God is correct. And once you get the vertical, once you get the vertical right, then the horizontal would fall into place. We are going to conquer only through Jesus. And you want to say, Lord, I know that I can be a conqueror, but it's only through you. And by your grace, I want you to help me. To be a conqueror. Wherever you are. Let us have a prayer. Our Father and our God. In Jesus. We are more than conquerors. One with God. Can make the difference. And today I present my. Listening friends to you dear God. Whatever the situation. Whatever the problems. You are the problem solver. You are the miracle worker. I present them to you, dear God, and I pray that you would grant them success. Help them, dear God, to put their trust and their confidence in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Seen by everyone and lead others to trust and love.